It's the UB Football Insider Show. Coming up, we'll get you ready for Saturday's homecoming showdown with the Ohio Bobcats, the team picked to win the Mid-American Conference East Division. You'll meet a running back so fast they call him Smoke. And you'll meet some of the new names that will play key roles for the UB men's and women's teams as basketball season gets started. It's all coming up on the UB Football Insider Show with Lance Leipold, and it starts right now. now and it's a handoff to Patterson stutter step breaks through 25 breaks a tackle at the 30 40 50 yard line down the left sideline 40 30 20 15 10 bullseye it's an 82 yard Jarrett Patterson touchdown Jarrett Patterson going 82 yards for a touchdown, part of 183 yards rushing for him, coach, part of 309 yards in the game. Your rushing attack leads the Mac. What has worked so well for that group? Well, I think the complementary running styles of the two running backs really help us between Kevin and Jarrett's style. Um, but, of course, it starts up front with the experience that we have there with with uh, you know that that front five, Jacob Gall's played a lot of football. I think we've talked about that in the past, and they've done a great job so far this year. Your uh, your team leads the country in rushing attempts, which is a bit of an oddity, isn't it? Well, it is, and uh, you know it's it's a good sign because we've been successful, but we also have to get you know we have to strive for more balance, and we have to be a little more consistent in the passing game if uh, you know we want to you know reach our goals. All right, well, all of that's going to have to start happening on Saturday because it's a big one for Lance and the Bulls when they take on the Ohio Bobcats. It is homecoming 2019. Let's dive into the Bobcats, part of our town BMW keys to the game. Uh, this is always a great game. It's always an anticipated game. I, I, I know because of your relationship with Frank Solich, you, you probably rise to a little bit of the occasion <laughs> of these games too, don't you? Well, I, I enjoy it because of the great respect I have for, for Frank Solich and, and his staff and um, um, I owe a lot to Frank personally, just based on opportunities, and uh, so, that, so that makes. But sometimes competing against friends and mentors is is uneasy sometimes. But after the game, it's always good. But the way they go about it and the way they play the game, uh, you know, it, it's one that makes it a, a great competition. This has been an interesting series, and one of the more interesting parts of this series is the fact that your team has won four straight games at home. Your team has not lost at home to Ohio since 2009. In turn, they've won four straight games in Ohio. So any theory as to why this has become such a home field advantage series? You know, I'm not really sure. Sometimes it maybe has to do with where it is in that time of the year, who's backs against the wall it, this is early in Mac play this time so um, you know it's homecoming for us hopefully we have a great crowd that we can feed off of and and find a way to to get a win and keep that streak alive Ohio has been picked by everyone across the board as the preseason favorite to win the Mac East they started one in three you draw any conclusions from their non-conference performance no you, you never know like I, I've said many times and you know our non-conference schedule of mid-american conference schools are, are pretty challenging and, and you just don't know what injuries people are fighting through getting used to new personnel um, but with an open week and everything I'm sure that they're going to be ready to put their best foot forward. Well they also have one of the best weapons in the Mid-American Conference and that is quarterback Nathan Rourke. Uh, Tyree Jackson last year was first team All-Mac quarterback. Nathan Rourke was second. This stat kind of blew me away a little bit and shows everybody how versatile Rourke is as both a runner and a passer. He's accounted for 85 career touchdowns in 30 career games. Is stopping him jobs one, two, three, four, and five? Yes, all the above and and he's very talented, very elusive. They use his talents very well as a runner. 
uh, play action pass, uh, great competitor, sees the field really well. Um, it's hard to bring them down on the first shot, especially like in, in the passing game. It, that, that's the part that you think you have them and you don't. So getting multiple people around the ball is going to be very important. He is missing some of his outstanding weapons from years past, and I think Bulls fans will will know when I mention the name A.J. Olette, the running back who's been was great, uh, Poppy White, the wide receiver. Those guys are both, I think, on NFL practice squads right now, understandably so. So have they had to change a little bit with do, with new weapons? Has that forced Rourke to do things differently or do maybe try to do more? Well, I, I think they're still using the you know same philosophy and what they're doing. I think they're just trying to find, you know, much like we are in some ways, uh, who are going to be those consistent performers for you they're using multiple running backs and they've played other guys in the past as well but probably playing up to three running backs and and using different targets you know keeping guys healthy for many of us are is always a challenge so you see different receivers being used at different times but they do have some young unproven players I think that are starting to show you know what they're going to be and we've got to be ready for all of them your defense has played very well this year number one rated in the MAC number one against the run but how much more of a challenge is it to stop an offense like this as you alluded to with a quarterback who is equally as good throwing and running and then as you've said to me before sometimes he looks like he's going to run and he starts to throw uh, very challenging and and one of the things that makes it challenging of course is his experience and and what he has seen and and how he gets out of things um, and some of the play action things that they do off the option you know the speed option attack not not the RPO, so to speak, but but they'll they'll run the ball like they're running speed option, pull it back three steps, and then all of a sudden there's two guys crossing and somebody's wide open. That hurt us last year. We've got to be ready for all the different things that they do. And, uh, you know, again, you know, preparation, reading your keys and discipline will be very important. Going to be a tough one, going to be an important one. It's the Ohio Bobcats here at UB Stadium for homecoming 2019. These have been our town BMW keys to the game to get you ready for the Bulls and the the Bobcats coach good luck thank you very much Paul coming up it's a Bulls digital biography running back Kevin Marks Jr. shares his UB football story that's next on UB football insider game day returns to UB Stadium on Saturday October 5th when UB hosts Ohio for the annual homecoming game presented by Town Auto before kickoff enjoy a tailgate concert by Nerds Gone Wild food trucks kid friendly entertainment and more kickoff is at 3.30 for tickets call 1877 UB there visit UBBulls.com welcome back to UB Football Insider this segment is presented by SefQ, changing lives every day Welcome back to the UB Football Insider Show with Lance Leipold. My name is Paul Peck. The Bulls have an outstanding one-two punch at running back, Jarrett Patterson and Kevin Marks. Every good backfield tandem needs a good nickname. Kevin Marks' nickname is Smoke, so we've kind of dubbed it the Smoke and Fire Backfield. And both guys are red hot, especially Marks, the man who wears number five. Kevin Marks, Jr., Number five, running back for the UB Bulls. King goes in motion, handoff up the middle, got a hole, 15, 10 yard line, five, that's a Buffalo touchdown! I'm from Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, grew up right outside the beach, went to Norview High School. I grew up playing football when I was five. My dad introduced it to me, and then all my friends in the neighborhood, we used to play throwback and run. My freshman year, I played varsity football at DN, got a little bit of snaps at um, running back. I got my career long, my freshman year, 60 yards. My senior year, I uh, had 2,000 and something yards with 33 touchdowns. Bulls defensive back Isaiah King was Kevin's teammate in high school and a big reason why Marks now wears the blue and white. Isaiah King, very hard worker. He was a um, track athlete as well as a football athlete. That's my brother. I think I started getting recruited by them first and they offered us, they liked us, and then it just came down to decision making after that. Fellow sophomore running back Jared Patterson has combined with Kevin to form the top backfield in the conference. It started off the field, me and Jared. We train hard. I see him out there when I'm rolling up to the field in the summers. He's out there working out. In practice, we're competing. We're competing, we're making each other better. I know he played the same position as me, but we're on the same team. From the first drive, whoever's starting, it doesn't matter. We're gonna get, we're gonna get it. First down handoff goes to Marks. Got a hole on the left side, 35, 40 yard line. I always got the sidelines at the 40, 30, 20, 10, bullseye. It's a 70 yard Kevin Marks Buffalo touchdown. I feel like me and him have a very good IQ. 
We know how to read the field. We're scanning the field. We know it. Um, we study our plays. We're picking up the reads. We're looking at the fronts. We, we study hard. We st uh, student athletes of the game. We actually do compete very hard in practice. That's what's making us better each and every day, competing, trying to be better than one, one another. And that's making us better. My first touchdown, Eagle Stadium. I remember against Temple and then um, the CMU game, I broke out for almost 200 and I had the 70-yarder. Did the showboat at the end. That was the best run of my uh, college career, I feel like. It feels good to run away from guys and to, to know you. Gonna uh, celebrate with your teammates after. Kevin's running style and breakaway speed is similar to UB legend and Super Bowl champion James Starks. Starks finished his career as a UB Bull as the number two all-time rusher, only behind Brandon Oliver. James Starks, he liked my game from the moment he saw my film. He said, I kind of run like him. I can send him film to see what I'm missing or see what I need to work on. So it's always good to have that relationship. I didn't expect to play right away. I had to work hard, training, get my mind right in the classroom. And I was very blessed to have the year I had. Well, Kevin Marks himself is fifth in the MAC in rushing, which you know is behind his teammate Jared hmm. Patterson, who's second in the MAC in rushing. But Kevin comes off another hundred-yard game as both he and Jarrett go over a hundred against Miami. Um, how do you use both of them? Is there a rhyme or reason <laughs> to when one gets used or one doesn't? Well, it, it depends by game plan. I think Andy Koldnicki, not only being the offensive coordinator but being their position coach, has done a great job with utilizing you know their talents, complementing one another resting one to the other, putting them on the field at the same time. But there's certain runs that there'll be a time that, you know, maybe Kevin's a little bit better at. Maybe if we want something to hit, you know, as we say, downhill directly right away. Um, sometimes there might be a perimeter run or something that may create space for someone to beat someone one-on-one. -on -one. You know, maybe Jared's going to get that. But they rep them all, and, and we kind of rotate by series and, and see who gets the hot hand and kind of go from there. To follow up on that, analyze the skill sets for Kevin and for Jared and, and how they're different and how you then utilize them differently. Well, you know, they're both physical runners, but, but Kevin's a little bit bigger, broad-shouldered guy who – who's a little bit longer of a strider. Um, you know, we saw, but he, but he has excellent speed as we saw last year at Central Michigan, you know. And then, you know, Jarrett's speed showed last week at Miami. So, they both, you know, Jarrett can, you know, kind of start and stop and, and freeze a guy, but still has great quickness and speed to then to accelerate, accelerate or re-accelerate himself into, into a, a hole. And uh, so those two things are probably the biggest things. They're, they both have worked uh, extremely hard over the last two years on their hands so that we can use them in the, in the passing game a little bit more, and they're above average receivers. So we can utilize them. It's not just rushing yards, but how are we going to get the ball in their hands as much as possible? How much do they push each other, having two top flight running backs who I'm sure would love to be in there almost all the time? So how do the two coexist and make each other better? Well, they do coexist real well, and they complement each other, not, not just in styles but uh you know they're they're happy for each other's success and sometimes that that's not easy and but they've been able to see the benefits of it and you know it saves on the wear and tear of the body through the season and and really the other guys in the room uh, again i give a lot of credit to andy for how he's made that work in the room because sometimes you know everybody wants to be the man everybody wants to have the carries but they've seen the benefit of having two guys and and sometimes two plus um, kind of sharing the load. So they, they work well together. They understand what we're trying to do. And, uh, you know, it's not a matter of who starts or who doesn't. They know they're going to get their touches. Even back before you got here and since you have been here as well, this school has an incredible tradition of turning out very high-level running backs. Is that a niche that UB now has? And do you capitalize on it? Well, I hope so. I think anytime you're recruiting running backs and, and we feel we've, we've got young ones in the program, we're going to be productive as well. You know, everybody wants to look at you know how your what your offense is and I've said many times we want to be as balanced as possible I think uh, where we're located geographically you know, um, you know weather could be a component every now and then on a, on a Saturday or a game day and uh, you know you're gonna have to run the football but also I think if you're gonna have a chance to win championships you need to be able to run the football and I think we've got a couple guys right there they're gonna help us get there yeah a couple guys part of the smoke and fire backfield as we like to call them with Kevin smoke marks and Jarrett Patterson gonna be a big part of Saturday's homecoming game against Ohio coach good luck thank you very much Paul Next on UB Football Insider, we hit the hardwood and check in with both men's and women's hoops.
Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Town BMW, the official auto partner of UB Athletics. Welcome back to the UB Football Insider Show with Lance Leipold. My name is Paul Peck. New players, a new coach, but the same high expectations. The UB men's basketball season has officially started. Two good practices. I'm really excited about it. I mean, the guys done a good job. Their work ethic's been very good. Their energy's been good. Attention to detail, they, we've got to clean up and get better at. Um, but I like our first two days. And I, I told them, I said, look, it's just a day-by-day -day process. It's just, uh, we just need to get a little bit better than the day before. And But we need to have carryover. We're going to throw a lot at them a little bit. Then you got to go back, clean it up, and then throw it again at them again. Uh, but that's part of the process. And uh, But so far, they've handled that. They know what a high-level player is in this league and how to act like them and how to perform and how to practice like that. So that's helped us. Now we've got some good new additions, and that's always challenging in terms of getting them up to speed. But I think there's some good athletic talent. There's some, a little bit of their strengths. They're shooting the ball, taking care of the ball. We want to get them a, that better. I think the biggest thing I could always tell all those guys, take care of the ball, take good shots. That'll increase your game quickly. Too many times, new guys try to come in and do too much, and then it, it takes them a while to recover. Just being a leader, I feel like if I lead as an example, everybody will follow. So I just play my hardest, do the blue collar that, that we has built here for a couple of years. And um, I feel like we just got after it. Um, we're learning, but it, also we, we, we get into it. Um, it's a lot of uh, new new kids, and uh, we're just teaching them the roles. We want to be the uh, best defensive uh, team in the MAC, let alone the, uh, country, the country. So defense, defense, defense. We got, we got a, a lot of stuff on our shoulders, you know. Uh, a lot of a big target on the back, so you know, just getting ready, getting getting the games ready, getting extra shots, extra reps, all this extra stuff to help us go along with the season. Well, of course, it's always defense. I think that's really, really important. The other thing is, is that play up tempo, but along with it, take good shots. We're not just playing fast and play fast. You want to play quickly with efficiency. I think that's the biggest thing. So those are probably the two things there. And defending, defending, defend, 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 defend and rebound over and over. So we're getting there on that. I saw some good progress from day one to day two, which I'm really happy about. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. The UB women's basketball season has also started, and much like the men's team, they have to replace some of the greatest players in school history. But UB women's head coach Felicia Leggett Jack is excited to find the next great stars. We're more balanced this year. I think that we can score the points a little bit more. I'm hoping that we can score about 75, 80 points this year. But if they stop defending, we're going to slow the ball down. But we got a lot of shooters right now. Talent-wise, I think we're a better team, talent-wise. But they're, they don't have the experience of game, game time. And I'm excited to, to try to just pour into them. You guys, if you're not in, doesn't mean you got to be out. You can be in if you're out. You guys, you can give something if you're having a bad day. Young people have energy, and we're the type of team that we make a mistake, but we go, we go, we go. And we're not dwelling on the past. We're not dwelling that, oh, I'm old enough, I should get this. No, we make a mistake, and we go. We bring the energy, we bring the effort, and we run, run, run. I love being a leader. I don't see any downfalls to being a leader of a team. It just kind of falls in my hands, being that um, a lot of the underclassmen and the upperclassmen as well come to me on the court and off the court for certain things. and. Um, I just take on that responsibility and try and be the best leader that I can. And I can't wait to get out there with the young cats now and also the newcomers. This is my next level year. Like this is me. I'm hoping to achieve like um, my next level, like another game up to really show um, what I could bring and really show my, ex since I have one year under my belt, to really show that I really, really dominate on the court. Always a big expectation. We always want to do better than we did last year. We always want to do better than we've ever done. And that's the expectation this year. Some people say 20 wins, some people say whatever. I say, let's just be better than we've ever been. And what we've done is we went to the Sweet 16 already. So let's surpass that. How do you do that? Stay in truth to the moment. Stay locked into the day. And if you can win the day and win, win tomorrow, just win tomorrow and just keep winning those days day by day, uh, we will surpass Sweet 16 and we won't even know it. Family on three, one, two, three. Family. Coming up, we hit the new courts and check in with UB Tennis. 
We'll also give you all the information on homecoming weekend. UB Football Insider continues in a moment. This is UB Football Insider, presented by ECMC. The difference between health care and true care. Welcome back to the UB Football Insider Show with Lance Leipold. My name is Paul Peck from inside UB's Alumni Arena. The Murchie Family Fieldhouse is not the only new addition to the UB Athletics Sports Complex. And just this past week, the men's and women's tennis teams got a chance to break in their new courts. This is something we've wished and dreamed for for so many years and to have it come together so quickly and have it be so beautiful. I mean, it's just so wonderful for both programs. We don't have to get up and travel uh, to go practice, which is really, really cool. Uh, the guys can come out, they can hit serves. There's no, it's not a big production to go to practice uh, when we're outside, which, uh, which it had been even at Ellicott. So, so that means a lot. We're, we're closer to alumni, we're closer to the stadium, the field house. Uh, we'll get to see more people around. Uh, it's a nice little buzz to have. Uh, and the court and the, the facility is, is way beyond our expectations. It's beautiful. It's a great feeling being out here. Like we've been waiting for this for a long time. And yeah, being close to alumni and to the other facilities is just great because people can come out and see us practicing and competing. It means a lot for us for sure. Uh, first of all, the location uh, is great. I mean, we can go and practice whenever now, uh, which, is, which is totally great for us. Uh, we can come out early mornings, work on our serves whenever. Just like small things like that that will improve our game a lot. You're in the, the heartbeat of everything. You got, you know, soccer right there and football and, you know, track and field and softball. Everything's right here. So to have the support of other athletes and, you know, professors knowing where the tennis courts are instead of being hidden over in the corner of campus, it's really, it just makes you really feel a part of this great university. And there's been so much positive going on with all the sports that this is just a very exciting time for UB Athletics. This Saturday, it's a big one for the Bulls football team. Their annual showdown with Ohio, and it also happens to be homecoming. So you're going to want to get there early and soak in the whole game day experience. UB Stadium is the place to be on game day. Stampede Square opens three hours before kickoff where you can enjoy tailgating and a family-friendly experience. Then join the band, cheerleaders, and dance team for the walk to victory at 1 o'clock where you can catch the Bulls up close as they head into the stadium. The tailgate concert then starts at 1.30 when 80s cover band Nerds Gone Wild takes the stage. And before you head into the stadium, grab something to eat at Food Truck Row. Be sure to round up your friends and family on game day to cheer on the Bulls. For tickets, call the UB Ticket Office at 1-877-UB-THERE or visit ubbulls.com. And here's another reason to make sure you're here at UB Stadium on Saturday for homecoming. The Bulls have not lost to Ohio at home since 2009. I'd like to keep that streak going. It's a 3.30 kickoff that you can hear on the radio on ESPN 1520 and you can see on ESPN+. Plus. Hopefully, we'll see you at UB Stadium for a big one. Thanks for joining us for the UB Football Insider Show with Lance Leipold.